Hello, everyone. My name is Andy Castillo. I'm an editor here at American City and County. Welcome to this fast chat. These days, all major wireless carriers provide priority access to first responders so they can stay connected during critical incidents and emergencies. But that's just within network. To maintain connectivity across carriers, each device must be registered with the Department of Homeland Security's Wireless Priority Service. To tell us more about this service and why it's so important, I'm here with Stuart Campbell, who enables people to access the WPS program for T-Mobile. Welcome, Stuart. Thank you. It's really good to be here. In your work, you work very closely with the Department of Homeland Security in the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency, and you help both public and private agencies to enroll in the priority program. Stuart also makes sure they have priority access to T-Mobile's network and helps to ensure that they maintain cross-carrier priority. Stuart, can you tell us a little bit about how the priority access works and what preemption is? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So I'm going to go back in history just a little bit here and uh, talk about how this program came to be and why it's important. Uh, for many years, uh, the government relied on a program uh, called the GETS program. And what it did was in the, in the old days when you had a landline or you had a home phone and you made a phone call, sometimes you'd uh, not get the person that you're calling. Instead, you'd get a series of tones and there would be a recording on the end of that call that would say, we're sorry, all circuits are busy. Please hang up your call and dial again. Well, what do you do in that case, right? So what they had was for registered people in the GETS program, they had a hard card and that card would uh, enable them to have uh, an 800 number to call. It would have a personal 12 digit pin and then they could dial the number. So in that case, they'd hang up, they'd dial the 800 number, they'd dial the 12 digit pin and the 10 digit phone number and their call would be recognized as a priority call. Okay, and that's how people got through congestion before cell phones came around. And it worked really well up until the 9-11 terror attacks. And during the 9-11 terror attacks, it was the first huge mass casualty event. First responders were there where they were using cellular phones as their primary mode of communication during that emergency. Well, all the towers were saturated because not only were they trying to communicate, but everybody who was impacted uh, that day by the terror attacks were also trying to communicate with their loved ones and, you know, trying to get in touch with people or, you know, coordinate amongst themselves. And, time, you know, that was recognized as a problem during that event. But then there was a commission afterwards, the 9-11 commission, which was a, a, a congressional inquiry into what could we have done better? What, what do we need to improve? And what was recognized was we had to come up with a wireless version of the GETS program. And what that meant was they came to the carriers and they said, how can we do this? Because the one thing you can't do when your cell phone doesn't make a call is you can't make an 800 call. That was the shortcoming in, in the previous program. So what they did was uh, they, they created a, a, a uh, an enablement of our towers to recognize a priority cell phone. All right. And so instead of having a card that you could use on any phone, this time it was actually the device that was enabled for priority. The device would be recognized by the tower. The tower would allow that phone call to go through by dialing star 272, which is the invocation. I make a call. It doesn't go through. I go, oh, I, I need to dial star 272. And that's how... Um, phone calls are recognized for priority uh, on wireless devices. So more or less the, the program has started out following 911 in response to just over congestion of, of cellular networks. What more should we know about WPS? Well, it's evolved over time. Um, so in the, in the earlier um, iterations of the program, there was a, uh, a couple of shortcomings. Uh, one was capacity. Uh, with the old 2G technology and then 3G, uh, there was only so much uh, priority to give out, so to speak, at a given tower. And so the program focused primarily on command and control structures within first responder and government agencies. But over time, as uh, cell phones have pretty much replaced most office phones and most home phones, everybody has a cell phone. And obviously, the systems that carry those phone calls have also uh, become much bigger. And uh, what we've done is we've uh, programmed in the ability to provide priority to more people at the same time that the government realizes there might be far more people that need to um, respond during a time of emergency um, than just the 10% at the command and control structure. So if you think about a policeman on the beat, 
they're just walking down the street. They're not part of the command control structure, but they're at, they're at the crowded tower. Well, they need they need priority too. So the guidance from CISA and Department of Homeland Security over time has broadened their recommendation for use, which has been overcome by two things. The one is the capacity, and two is the administration in order to provide the WPS service to more people. So I think we've, I mean, covering government for, um, as a journalist, I've heard a lot about, you know, prioritization, especially over the last few years, it feels like carriers are really putting a, a big focus on it. What differentiates that from WPS? Well, um, there's basically three major carriers these days, and we all provide priority access and preemption, and we all provide WPS. So we, we have an equal footing. The only difference is the way that T-Mobile has chosen to recognize um, priority access and preemption on the T-Mobile network is different than the way our competitors have done. And what I mean by that is we decided the definition of who should get priority access and preemption fell exactly in line with what qualifies you to be a WPS user. So instead of developing a rate plan and branding it and charging for it, for priority access and preemption, we just decided at T-Mobile that if you were important enough to qualify for wireless priority service with the Department of Homeland Security, you also qualified to have priority access and preemption on your T-Mobile phone. Now, once somebody's enrolled in WPS, how do they access it? Well, I mentioned this a little earlier, but star 272 is the invocation. And there's two ways that a person can in invoke that uh, priority mechanism. One is they can simply dial it. But the truth is most of us don't remember many phone numbers these days. If you, you know, think yourself on how many phone numbers you might uh, remember, it, it's probably in the neighborhood of two to seven. Most people, some people say they don't know any phone numbers. They strictly use their phone. So the Department of Homeland Security developed an app that's available to all Apple and Android users that interacts with your phone um, list in your cell phone. And um, once you open that app, you can look up a person in your contact list, you can press on that person, and there's a button down at the bottom that says WPS, then it does the dialing for you. Interoperability is a huge concern among first responders. During an emergency, it doesn't matter what carrier is being used, it just matters the call gets through. Why does T-Mobile focus so much on the WPS program? I'm glad you asked that question. It's, it's really important, and I talk to people all the time that when we register them for WPS, which gives them the ability to be able to dial star 272, that star 272 is only there for one use, and it's when there's congestion on another network. If you don't have WPS, it doesn't matter which carrier you have, even if I give you priority access and preemption on my network, it doesn't mean that once the call leaves that network and goes to a landline system or another one of the carriers that they'll recognize that call as having priority. By dialing star 272 and more importantly, giving you the capability to be able to dial star 272, you can mark your call with priority. And what that means is once it leaves the AT&T network, the T-Mobile network, the Verizon network, it doesn't matter which network it is, all three carriers work the same, that call will be recognized as a priority call by the other carrier too. So in other words, it's sort of like your AAA card. Your car stops on the road. You don't really care why it stopped, but you need to get somewhere else fast. You can call the, you can use that card. Let's just, that equates to star 272 to get that call to the destination that it needs to go to. So what does that really mean in the end? I have my device, I make a call, it goes through. I don't really care, it worked. It doesn't matter how T-Mobile did that for you, you're glad your call went through. And in most cases, by having the WPS feature on the phone and enabling priority access and preemption, your call will go through if T-Mobile is congested. But in the rare case that the other system you're calling to is different than your own, it's one of the other carriers or it's a landline and they're congested, the only way to get through that congestion is by dialing star 272 and putting priority markings that are recognized throughout the telecommunications industry. If you're on another service or on our service without that WPS feature and don't have the capability to dial star 272, there is no way for you to get that call through the other uh, 
system. I mean, it seems like it's a really vital program. I mean, for first responders, uh, but is there anyone else that maybe could access this? Is this exclusively for, you know, firefighters, police officers? Who else can access this service? I'm so glad you asked that. Literally the entire United States infrastructure, the critical infrastructure of the United States is, is um, eligible to have WPS in their phones. As I mentioned earlier, it was sort of had a narrow focus at the beginning of its inception for mostly first responders and state and federal, local tribal uh, agencies. But we've realized that, for instance, the transportation sector is a big part. If we think back to December when all those flights were canceled, uh, when we had system outages at, at the federal level, um, there might be a need to provide priority to the people that are trying to get those people through the airport. At a school district, unfortunately, one of the things that we live with right now are mass shootings. And if you think about a mass shooting, there's going to be a lot of people involved with the response to that mass shooting that are uh, part of the school district, not just the first responders. So what we want to do is we want to put a priority fence around the people that need to communicate during a time of emergency. And if needed, we can exclude people that aren't part of that response. And last question, why does T-Mobile prioritize this so much? Well, we think it's the right thing to do. T-Mobile led the way in eliminating charges for WPS. Uh, historically, it was seen as a profit center. And we felt that something that was utilized by the people that keep America running wasn't something that we should profit off of. So the nice part is the Department of Homeland Security pays T-Mobile to provide this service to our eligible customers. We do not charge you a dime for it. And on the same note, if you have something that's available to, that makes your service better and helps you to communicate better during a time of emergency, we feel it's our job to get out and talk to people about how to register for it, sign up for it, and know how to use it. So that's why we have put this at one, as one of our top priorities with the WPS program. Well, thank you for talking to us, Stuart. Uh, the WPS service is certainly an important program, and anyone, everyone who serves in critical roles should definitely know about it. I look forward to continuing the conversation. And thank you to all who are with us for this American City and County Fast Chat. I hope you'll join us next time. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day.